Greetings, fellow adventurers, and welcome to the Couple of Nerds podcast. I'm D&D Wife, the creator of dndwifestories.com, and your co-host. Joining me is the man behind the screen, my brilliant dungeon master, and also my husband, Egile. Say hi, Egile. Hey, everyone. Excited to be here sharing our nerdy adventures with all of you. Absolutely. So what's Couple of Nerds all about? Well, we're diving into the realms of Extraeus, sharing our experiences, playing D&D in our apartment, and exploring the intricate tapestry of relationships both in and out of the game. And we got some exciting segments for you all. From lore deep dives to crafting tips, artwork showcases, and relationship advice on and off the table, we've got a little bit of everything for every kind of adventurer. So whether you're a seasoned adventurer or a tabletop newbie, we invite you to join us today. Tune in, relax, and enjoy the magic of Couple of Nerds. May your roles be natural 20s and your adventures be legendary. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10th episode of Couple of Nerds. And may I just say I'm super excited that it's number 10. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm still kind of stoked in the fact that we've made it this far. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm D&D Wife, your host, and with me is my co-host and Dungeon Master, as well as husband, Eguile. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> uh, so uh, well, let's talk about this episode. It's the Traveler Chronicles. What's it about? Uh, this is the big deal, uh, especially for me. Uh, this is going to essentially be the starting of the tale of our campaign uh which we've inducted the chronicles of the travelers mm-hmm. essentially because um our story essentially begins with just a middling group of travelers that are just it happened to be going at the same to yeah. the same place at the same time mm-hmm. at this current moment um and, and through various clandestine as well as just sheer coincidence they all just happen to find themselves in the same situation over and over and over again yep. so we thought this would be a cool way to kind of give scene analysis of each of the major scenes that have occurred throughout our campaign mm-hmm. and that way uh we can share a little bit but it's kind of hard with D campaigns where like you know if you're not there if you're not watching it like critical role it's kind of difficult to really catch up on all that story content yeah and to get really the like view of what's going on without actually having seen it that's a little tough yeah so we figured this would be a cool way to allow uh our listeners to kind of hear a little bit of the different scenes and the craziness mm-hmm. that occurs uh as well as a unique chance to also interview and talk to our npcs and players in the context of the story as if they were there kind of giving an eyewitness testimony uh to our reporter luna Yep, yep. And we're going to be having a little special guest with us coming up, uh, oh, Bricky. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be something to look forward to. But mm-hmm. really, as we move forward with this, uh, we're going to definitely be able to connect more with the actual world that is Extraeus. Yes. Uh, whereas everything else has been more of talking about how we built it. This mm-hmm. is actual the living, breathing lives that are living and creating that narrative that we love so much about D&D. Yeah, they're really shaping the world as we go. And so, and and I'm a part of it too. So it's been super fun to do it with them. And we touched a little bit on in the last episode where we were talking about the significance of Session Zero. Mm -hmm. And we kind of discussed it with introducing Bogbean, which is our graphic artist at Link's character. And first, kind of giving a kind of dive into what it is the world and the characters that live into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But really, what we wanted to look at is that she wasn't the only one a part of that opening scene. And what was cool was because we set it up as you know a veteran player as well as a rookie player were paired up in a very unique scenario Mm -hmm. so there was another player who had to kind of work not only through his own character but also through the dynamic of this rookie player who could be literally anything chaotically yeah she she could be completely a loose cannon and that's a tough thing to try and mitigate and so as we had said before we opened with this scene where we had three different characters who essentially started the game locked in various boxes and crates darkness and had no real idea where their location was Mm -hmm. or where truly uh they have been basically sent to uh, did they get the gist that they were on a boat? Just because I imagine you could feel like a slight rocking. Yeah, we definitely, you know, because obviously we knew that there was already a pirate type character. And so mm-hmm. there was an attempt to make sure it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, we're on the same boat. Yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of hard to dissuade players from just making that connection. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why we do a lot of scene work where we do these individual scenes to help jump from point to point. And we'll obviously get a little bit more into that on our next episode. Yeah. Um, but what 
what it allowed is them to kind of start with this blank slate so that they weren't really concerned about all this extra stimulus going on, right? It's not mm-hmm. like you're in the tavern and there's hun- you know all these all these tavern keeper and then there's this person, this person, and all these, and, and outside and there's guards and there's no, no. It's just you could be anywhere. You're in this very small confined space, and I think yeah. that made for a much more intimate encounter between what is essentially one player's first time RPing in the entirety of D and D for them. Yeah, that was a that was her first time trying it out, and I think she did a great job. Oh yeah, and so and, and that allowed for that exploration too, because mm-hmm. it was also cool to see how almost like her natural reaction would be just like anyone else, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm in a box. I've been in a box for a few months. My character's probably hungry. What's in these other boxes? Right. And then just starts cracking open boxes. <laughs> yeah. And that's what, you know, where I as the DM is just kind of excited because it's a matter of choosing which box would essentially determine her first interactions. And she just, as D&D luck would have it, would pick the box that included Bricky. Yeah. And I imagine the boxes came with like feed or whatever in them. But Bogbean is such a ravenous little beastie that she ate it all. Yeah. And, and in that <laughs> scene, she had three. There were actually multiple boxes mm. uh, of various sizes, a, a, a lot of actual crates and boxes that she could oh. pick through. So, I mean, she had... I mean, if she wanted to, probably about 20 different boxes full of various different things. And she just happened to pick the one that corresponded, well, well with a piece of Bricky. Yes, not the complete body. <laughs> and I think and I think that's the, the best introduction into mm-hmm. a character as it's very funny to have a character be introduced to another player as a headless corpse falling out of a box, essentially. Tumbling out lifelessly. Uh, to be ignored to begin with, only mm-hmm. to find the severed head moving, unable yeah. to speak because its mouth is stitched shut. Mm-hmm. But clearly the other part of this laying corpse, essentially, on the ground. Yeah, as much of a puzzle as Bricky looks like, you can still sort of fit all the jagged pieces together. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that was the kind of unique thing and the kind of situation we I wanted to create around Bricky and mm-hmm. working with his player um, is this idea that he was one of my long-standing players yeah. uh, with you and a few others mm-hmm. who had participated in the long campaign one yeah. um, and had kind of gone almost from the very beginning and mm-hmm. so i i refer to kind of the grouping of as my legacy players yep. and i really wanted to do something special and unique because extraeus is special and unique mm-hmm. and so each one of you has not only a unique kind of class but a hybrid of one of the main classes abilities and features as well yeah. with each one of you kind of secretly hiding it as long as you could mm-hmm. before revealing your characters oh yeah and a lot of us still don't know no especially the the exact details of your guys's abilities mm-hmm. and skills still yeah. is unknown for everyone and so the player bricky and his player uh, itself they have this kind of unique character class all in of itself Mm -hmm. as its own special race uh, called the gestat Mm -hmm. and this being more of this kind of mixture of technical science necromancy and and kind of this undead but still living like creature and so it created this really unique comparison because now we have a character who is susceptible to you know undead like ability and consequences but also has a myriad of different kind of special abilities because of that undead status yeah uh, that allows not only for great role play storylines but also for great just practical ways that it can be used as a benefit as the story progresses mm-hmm. and i think it was ganat is it ganat oh. yeah ganat there's a lot of new words so <laughs> a obviously, lot. Uh, it's tough. And, and the cool thing about this is that this is also the creation of this player mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the lore and world building that came after were built off of how this player created the backstory of this character and i took that and then i was able to build almost an entire country governmental system and hierarchy based off of the character's backstory because that that's the major focus of extraeus Mm -hmm. is that it's not just the dm building this world and saying okay here's xyz you play xyz it's okay this world is a blank canvas and not only are my players invited to help shape and build that canvas but Mm -hmm. we're also opening it up to like our discord and allowing people to come and pitch ideas that Mm -hmm. we can build into extraeus proper and see even more npcs be created uh and be you know interacted with probably used (laughs) and abused yeah Uh, but in one way would be able to make a mark on extraeus as we keep building it on and Mm -hmm. on and on um, but I think the best thing to do now would be to go to our uh, 
ground on the ground reporter Luna, who I think has a better opportunity to connect with not only with uh, Bricky, but also her uh, his player, Eric. Oh, yes. Let's see what they're up to. Thank you, D&D wife. This is Luna joining you live from Extraeus. I'm here on the ground with our uh, good friend here, Bricky. Well, we just met, but I'd like to think of you as a friend. Uh, tell us a little bit of, of what you've experienced so far. Hello, um, <laughs> Luna. It's um, yeah, it's it's a bit weird here. It's it's dark in this um, lower part of. I don't know if it's a ein ship or some other aspect, but um, I'm here with uh, these two little kobolder, uh, Bogbean, and this other one named Miguel. Oh. Oh yes, yes. Um, so th- these little ones are they? Are they your charges? Are you supposed to be taking care of them? Um, Sikun Zuzaman, yeah, I'm supposed to uh, keep them together and keep them safe. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, is this just you doing it out of the kindness of your own heart, or, or are you guys friends? Have you have you been traveling together? Although I I will say traveling in a box is a bit strange. Um, ich weiß es nicht, ja. Yeah. Um. I do not know. Yeah. You, you, you don't know if you're friends. Oh, oh well, Bogbean and I, um, we seem to get along well, yeah. But um, Miguel's a little upset at the moment. Uh, why is he upset? Uh, Bogbean ate his tail. Oh, oh, de- oh! She was talking about that last time. I just thought she meant she had a delicious tail. Uh, interesting. So she bit it off of your other friend. Uh, yeah, um, I wasn't exactly able to do anything at the moment. That's what happens when you are in pieces. Uh, y- yes, and, and could you explain a little bit of how that works to me? Uh, you were all sorts of bits, and uh, no offense, but from what I understand, um, people can't generally stay alive when they're in pieces. Um, um, well, um, to put it simply, Luna... Um, I'm um, a ganat, or a uh, stitched fun. Uh, I'm a creation of Dr. D- Dietrich Wallstein. Um, and, yeah, I, it's a bit complicated, yeah. But I was lucky enough that uh, Bogbean saw fit to put me back together, since I was not whole at the time. And, and how did she put you back together? She's uh, clearly very good at stitching, yeah. Oh, oh, she literally sewed oh, you back together. Yeah. Oh, dear. That must have been... Um, it uh, didn't hurt. Well, I know it didn't hurt you, but it must have been very strange for her to sew a, a head, a moving head on a moving corpse. Uh, well, uh, are you a corpse? I'm not sure. Um, ich weiß es nicht. Um, when it comes to uh, Underbar und everything else, of the countries that I'm from, oh. the... Um, there's different classes, the uh, Toten Mensch und the Genat, the, um, or how would you say it in common, the, um, the dead folk and the, the stitched ones. We, uh-huh. There are different classifications and some of us are more sophisticated than others, yeah. Oh, uh, so there are different versions, are you saying? So yeah. um, the people who, uh, I assume it's people who create um, others like you. Oh, so those are usually um, some of the, the higher-up doctors and the, uh, the tot chefs. Oh, uh, and so they create things, but they're not all the same. Some are, are less smart, less uh, developed? Oh, uh, yeah, they are usually used for the more medial tasks. Oh. Such and... as working on, the, like, a, a Steinwand or a, a stone wall. A, a stone wall? Yeah, it's like... To, to build things yeah. for people. Oh, that's quite interesting. And may I ask, on the subject of building things for people, mm-hmm. I, I did notice that your name is Bricky. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that a, a native name of the, uh, what was that, the Undebarian region? Um, nine. Um, I, the, the best way to put it is I don't have a name. Or a name. Um, mine, Bazaitong, or the... Um, designation is Leichenfaust V1. But um That's a mouthful. The, yeah, um so when it when it came to some of my first uh human interactions I took the name um Bricky von Wallstein, but it it's a bit unfortunate if you know anything about uh Imnari and it basically just translates to brick of the stone wall. Yeah. 
Oh, oh dear. Well, at least, you know, you, you managed to give yourself a name. It was more of a placeholder since no one wanted to say the other one. Uh, understood. It must have been quite a bit to say and remember anyway. Um, but uh, thank you so much for joining me to share all, all the wonderful news about you. I loved learning about your home country. And uh, I'm just going to pass it off now to your creator, mm -hmm. your player, Eric. All is good. <laughs> have a good day. Danke. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, all right. Uh, Eric, come on up. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your character, Bricky, there. How uh, can you explain? Explain, obviously, without giving away too much, how you sort of came up with him. Oh. Well, hello, Luna. It's um, nice to not have to do that voice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it's a bit difficult, yeah. Oh, it's, well, having practiced German as long as I have and having been to the country, it's um, the looks I get. It's like, yeah, I know I can translate, but it's uh, it's not exactly... It, you know, it's American German. It's, it's, it's rough around rough, the edges. Yeah. You're not a native, so but, how can you be expected to speak it, like one? It, exactly. But when it comes to the inspiration for Bricky, the, um, I'll have to say the biggest um, inspirational aspect for me was uh, a piece of my childhood. Oh, really? Um, one of the first books that I ever read that actually got me into the sciences mm -hmm. uh, was the original version of Frankenstein. Oh, yes, by Mary Shelley. Yes. Um, and I still have that book, mm -hmm. and I still read it um, from time to time. It is... Sadly, still a dull read. It's not. The, it's not the best read. <laughs> it's only it's fun just, if you're really into the gothic well, literature. It's, it's just because it's how many times it's had to be translated. It's yeah, it's mm, rough. It's a bit dense. Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> no, but it's um. I really loved the the idea of having something that's uh, brought back um, where like life should not exist. The aspect that you could have um, this Created. thing that you know. How are people going to treat it when? It's like, oh, hey, this shouldn't be here. Yes, but it when, is. when the very laws of life are sort of manipulated, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. or bent in a certain way, it, it tends to throw people off. Yeah, and and the German aspect, well, mm -hmm. out, outside of the original Frankenstein uh, being, um, well, uh, German in nature, with some Austrian thrown in there as well. Oh, um, I see. Having trying to learn you know german myself and it actually being part of the reason how i met my wife because uh, oh. she's also a german speaker so it's just an aspect that i wanted to explore um, it's quite lovely to include that as part of your player character that's wonderful yeah. and i and i do know that not you're not just a player you're a dungeon master too oh i, I have been a dungeon master many times and for many years um <laughs> it's been a while uh mostly because i've been in um campaigns um with yourself and your husband it's been uh, really true, great true. we have monopolized your time a little oh uh, you really have you really <laughs> so have. sorry if that kept you from uh, you know running a game <laughs> oh no no it, it, it's honestly fine being um being a husband uh being a business owner and uh now recently being a father of one yes congratulations yes um it's it's it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. so if i gotta you know choose where i spend my few moments of free time i gladly spend them here because oh. it's worth it well we appreciate it thank you so much and about how many years have you been playing well i actually unlike a lot of people i know i actually just cut my teeth into dungeons and dragons at the very beginning of fifth edition so i forget oh, exactly right. when that came out a few years ago um six or seven i think oh, about. Well, it might even be more than that it maybe might ten be, <laughs> might, yeah it might be, might a, be decade a decade at this yeah. point. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, they keep the editions going for a while mm -hmm, before but, they um, update yeah but i didn't dm right in the beginning because i was so new and i was a player for a couple of uh campaigns and then i uh started deeming at some of the local gaming clubs Ooh. and i was doing it for friends and before I knew it, uh, I was DMing for five different tables because I didn't realize just like how necessary a dungeon master is mm -hmm, until I vital. made way too many commitments. So, <laughs> yes, yes. And then you find out just how much oh, yeah. work goes into it, doing all that. Oh, yeah. Especially mm -hmm. when you find out the, the hardest part of dun of being a dungeon master outside of just playing D&D with your players while well, just getting them together to play. Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you could try and have uh, like a five person table but you might as well have 17 different friends that you're asking on a regular basis just so you could have five people show up but right. it's so hard when they're not always the same five people yes if they're rotating it's yeah, kind of strange it's kind of hard to you're kind of running a lot of one shots at that point you can't really mm -hmm. do continuous story campaigns. yeah that is a bit tough and then uh, one of the last questions i wanted to ask you is uh, are there any other ttrpg games you like to play anything you would recommend that you think is fun well, I'm 
as much of all the video games I've played in the past and everything else, I don't really have much of an online presence. Like I've played, um, I've played a couple of RPGs, like some of the Fallout series and a few other things mm -hmm. like that, but I haven't played much. What about tabletop games? Uh, currently, I've got um, uh, like Warhammer 40k, which I'm Ooh. very interested in. Um, I primarily play Necrons. Mm. Um, uh, funny, I'm almost perfectly inspirational <laughs> there for Bricky in the sense that they're <laughs> undead robots, um, but from far in the past and with a pseudo Egyptian theme. But yeah, oh, it's all right. um, and they're actually the yeah the first army I ever completed. There, I got what nine thousand points in the current edition. And they're all painted, and it was a pain in the butt. I imagine if I knew how many points that was, I would it, be super impressed. Um, but unfortunately, I don't play Warhammer. Well, I'm so sorry. Well, it's fine. The, uh, to put it simply of how overdone the army is, a uh, typical army is only 2,000 points. So I basically oh have four and a half army's worth of a points for a massive single... just force of things <laughs> yeah no it's um it's a little outrageous i was a, being a bit of a completionist but it was mostly <laughs> so i could run the army any way that i wanted to. yes make any variations yeah well thank you so much for joining us i can't wait to hear more from you as bricky i think it's going to be super exciting thank um but yes thank you oh it was an absolute pleasure thank you for having me absolutely have a good one right. and now back to couple of nerds Thank you so much, Luna, for that on-the-ground <laughs> reporting that you do so well. Uh, and so now we're going to be talking about the Cargo Hold Adventures. What's all that about? Yeah, so really just to set the scene, now that we kind of know the players and we mm. know the characters, essentially, as we opened in this introductory scene, it was essentially three characters all stashed in various boxes. And oh. as one of them, Bogbean, managed to pry open and find what we now know are the kind of disembodied pieces of Bricky. Yeah. Uh, though still alive, <laughs> obviously still functioning, though as a running joke, smelled horrible. Yeah, because she sniffed him first, right? Because she yeah. found him, thought he was food, it and was, was like, mm. it, it, At the time was <laughs> actually what I believe what stopped her from eating him. And had yeah. he been any other race that could be dismembered or whatnot it might have been axed had yeah. i not said oh it's this horrible he smell stinks worse than and death really it came more <laughs> from and really that line that whole joke actually came from game of thrones and the whole Tyrion joke of being stuffed in the box mm -hmm. and 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 the joke about him being smelly He's yeah like, i had to crap in a box for what do you months. expect what do you think i'm gonna yeah. smell like and so that's kind of the joke, but then it ended up becoming this much larger thing mm -hmm. uh, until later on in the story. But it Where was, it was this, like a part of his smell. But it was that one little kind of setting that actually changed what could, could have potentially been a way a different horrible scenario. massacre. <laughs> Um, but after the two kind of reconciled, repair one repaired the other, mm -hmm. um, that was when they started opening up other boxes. And yeah. one of the others they found was this very kind of small embroidered jacket <laughs> wearing uh, musician, uh, what we call a kobold in our world, a <laughs> kobolda. Yeah. <laughs> as Bricky would say. Yeah. Uh, and this little creature was as if he was on a stage show preparing lights, sound, <laughs> fog, coming out, believing him to be on a stage ready to perform, Aww. playing this electric lute as loud as he can, yeah. not really knowing that he's just another kind of stowaway aboard this boat. <sighs> Uh, and that's kind of where, like, you know, shenanigans kind of begin because you've <laughs> yeah. got kind of this prima donna bard who was told he was this star and, you know, just get in the box and your <gasps> your crowd awaits. Oh, man. And so he kind of had a little bit of an emotional breakdown, obviously, as most prima donnas do when reality <laughs> comes crashing down. <laughs> Um, and it was funny because the whole time you have, you know, Bricky, who's very much trying to keep these two creatures from just getting into everything um, as they begin. Opening. They're both ripping apart boxes, yeah, right? They both started <laughs> rapidly opening up various boxes in, in an attempt to looking for food, obviously, yeah. because all of them have been in these crates for an Weeks, undisclosed months, amount of time. Maybe? And they're all hungry. Yeah. Except for Bricky, who seems to not ever want to eat. Yep. Uh, and so as they're opening it, but they're finding what could be maybe inferred as cooking supplies, but in more like if you had a lot of flour, a lot of sugar kind of stuff it's around. It's like the Breaking Bad kind uh, of cooking yeah, supplies. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and, 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 as, and as these players are playing, they don't quite. You know, it, it could be anything. They don't know, and, and, yeah. And, of course, as Miguel being the bard, just kind of, hey, 
It could be edible and begins kind of scarfing down various handfuls, uh, obviously falling into this very psychoactive kind of Stupor? trip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he goes on a vacation for he a He kind of just falls to the ground and like... <laughs> yeah, but he, he is now <laughs> rocking out in the heavens yeah. in his mind and to a sold-out concert. Giving the best concert. concert of his life. But in doing so, <laughs> le- in my own being the DM and allowing my NPCs to be vulnerable for only a moment, oh. uh, we see Bogbean taking the opportunity, though in her mind, seeing it as a sort in, of act of <laughs> kindness, I, I guess is the way it is to not take the bard's hands as those were more vital for him. See, decides see, to eat his tail. See, Miguel was no longer hungry because he took all the drugs. So he was just gone <laughs> but yeah. frog bean was still very much hungry and miguel was the only edible thing yeah and so it, it's that whole you know yeah it's an npc but it was a great opportunity to allow a new player to really have that freedom that D gives you mm-hmm. to make literally any decision because really and that's the cool thing about homebrew which is why we stress it because of the uniqueness of our world, she did not know the significance of biting off a scalekin's tail. Yeah. And that by doing that, she inadvertently changed the entire directory of this NPC's entire plan. His life, His entire, everything. Everything gone. And they watched as this character underneath, while they're kind of hiding his stowaways because they've been out of the box now and assuming they probably shouldn't be out of these boxes. Yeah. <laughs> he begins to just wail at the top of his lungs. And if you've ever hold, heard a Kabolda scream at the top of your lungs, it's not really something that can be recorded. And it was, it would just blow the mic out. Oh no. Uh, as they are now trying to kind of stifle and quiet this creature who has now been gravely injured and both just mentally broken at his life being over. Oh, no. Uh, and, and so you have just this comical Three Stooges-like D&D escapades where one is trying to corral these two crazy little creatures uh-huh. uh, only for them to finally kind of figure out, okay, if nobody heard us or if they did hear this, they might as well see what's outside it might as well go out and and then of course instead of it being more of this stealth display you get two players who start kind of now concocting and this is where that fun of having a veteran player with a rookie player is that the veteran player is allowed to just kind of confer with the rookie that oh yeah we can do anything don't 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 worry we'll do it like i will teach you how to you just got to say what you want to (laughs) do and that's how we get this kind of like scooby-doo-esque like one standing on the other shoulder holding a grade up in broad (laughs) daylight where everyone sees them like clear as day Uh, i believe there was a stealth roll attempted yes it was attempted and very much (laughs) failed horribly horribly and so you have just essentially this start. This was this, the opening of our campaign is just this substance addled craziness of just destroying the life of an NPC while these two almost beings of chaos now found each other as ways to just even more create kind of more kind of incidences and trouble for not only just the DM, but also great story for as yeah. we progress later on. And the harm was really done inadvertently. Like, she didn't mean to hurt him. She thought, she genuinely thought that was the, like, least evil of the options. Yeah, and and that's the the great thing about mm-hmm. the home brewing is that because you don't know, you wouldn't take the precautions you normally would. When you play in yeah. already established systems, sometimes, especially with veteran players, they're going to avoid just not only with unintentionally, they will avoid certain things because they know the ramifications. Yeah. So they're not going to really take those same risks that you see new players take. Mm-hmm. And so by having that combined, it creates a wonderful scene. And, and just to to have that be the opening for our oh, campaign that was amazing really set the stage for yeah. what we had going and we'll see as we move from the next scene which is where we start viewing the outcast mm-hmm. and uh and the whole thing too and the biggest thing is all this is going on there is one singular player that this whole time as everything's going on has is just quietly been rolling a dice mm. as we go on for all of these scenes this person has just been rolling and rolling 
as they've quietly been observing all the shenanigans, waiting for their opportunity to come out. Oh, that's crazy. The <laughs> whole... Where could they even be on such a small boat? And that's, and that, <laughs> see, and this person has been hiding this character yeah. the entire time. Didn't want anyone to really know the details until we really got into it. Mm -hmm. We had some kind of ideas, but it was back and forth. And so, yeah. but they got to choose, given their stowaway status, mm -hmm. when exactly they revealed themselves. And that's so it was kind of this interesting thing as me being the DM, it's I'm one, I'm waiting for obviously this person to get a natural one so that yeah. they <laughs> are forced to reveal themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But also it allows for this kind of subterfuge as other players are noticing that this player constantly is rolling, but as they continuously not see them in the scene or hear anything yeah. or even a response from me, it leads that even more of what's going on. Oh, dear. And so, as we'll see in more of these scenes until quite a while, this uh, this unseen observer is going to be just kind of hanging out, watching what's going on. Yeah. Just... Until they make their grand appearance. Uh, when they choose, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how we want to see Traveler's Chronicles and kind of be able to describe a little bit to everyone mm. what exactly we experienced. And, yeah. and we hope that these kind of scene analyses are allow us to be able to understand the scene a little better yeah and and you know uh ant link is going to be releasing a lot of the comics that that kind of coincide with the story we're telling so that'll help as well Oh yeah so stay obviously stay in touch with comic caves mm -hmm. feed on our discord because yep, yep. that's where a lot of that kind of visual outlook mm -hmm. that's going to be produced for each of the different scenes and also we're hoping you stick with us for our next episode, which we'll be looking at the journey of the outcast. Yes, a mysterious newcomer to the scene, essentially. Where we jump from being in the kind of cargo hold of a ship to far thousands of miles away on the other side of the world on a man just starting a, a journey that mm -hmm. he doesn't really know why. Yeah, he's completely, almost completely clueless, but... And He's trying his best. And once again, we'll be able to introduce another player and mm -hmm. their character to you all and hopefully let you guys kind of get another connection to these individuals and how they like to play and create their characters. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that quite a bit. Um, but I'm super happy that you guys joined us for today's episode. Thank you so much for uh, listening in today. We always appreciate it. And we hope that you, you know, tell others not only that, but, you know, follow us on our uh, on our social medias, TikTok, Instagram, X. Uh, and we just encourage you to keep reviewing, listening. Yeah, and we also want to express our appreciation to Eric, as well as his mm -hmm. character, Bricky, who has allowed us to experience a very unique character, as well as taking on the challenge of being almost a representative of a country that is now being created for his character. Yes, completely brand new. So thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. And you will for sure be hearing more from Bricky in the future. So mm -hmm. keep an ear out for his other interviews where we get his unique take on the situation and uh, a little more into probably his backstory and creation. Yes, that'll be super fun. Well, thank you so much and have a good night. And that concludes today's journey through the realm of Couple of Nerds. We hope you had a blast exploring the intricate world of Extraeus. Don't miss out on the visual extravaganza over at our YouTube page at Couple of Nerds Podcast. It's where the magic comes to life with exclusive video segments, art previews, and a peek behind the curtain. Dive deeper into our adventures by visiting dndwifestories.com, your haven for all our podcast transcripts and a treasure trove of content dedicated to the captivating universe of Extraeus. Your unwavering support is our greatest treasure. Take a moment to weave your thoughts into a review and hit that subscribe button for an enchanting journey with a couple of nerds. Join us beyond the podcast in the Extraeus Project Discord. Connect with us, the creators, and even the travelers themselves. Witness the magic unfold in live drawing streams, game alongside us, and step into our digital tavern, the Bard's Haven. Share your stories and characters with fellow adventurers. Visit dndwifestories.com for the link to join our vibrant community. Stay tuned for more tales, more laughs, and more insight into the world of tabletop gaming. Until then, may your dice be kind, your campaigns epic, and your adventures legendary. <laughs>